everyone. Thank you for joining our uh, talk today. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Lillian. I'm the host for today. I'm from Student Enrollment Center. Okay, so the topic for today uh, will be which three university programs should you choose? I believe all of you completed SPM or GCSE, right? All right, so today here we have Assistant Professor Dr. Namina, who is the head of PU Department and AD. ADPP science. Hi, doctor. Can you hear me already? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. So, there's Dr. Nalina. And here, uh, we also have Mr. Go. He's the head of program for foundations. All right. So, hi, Mr. Go. Hi, Lillian, and all the students that are joining us today. Okay. So we will start from Mr. Go. His topic will be what's nice after SPM. All right. So if in between you all have any question, you all can uh, raise up your hand or you all can just drop message there. I'll, I'll help you to ask Mr. Go. All right. Thank you. Leave it to you, Mr. Go. Okay. Uh, does everyone seeing my screen now? Lillian, you can see my screen, right? Yes, yes. All right, thank you. So good afternoon to everyone. And uh, my name is Go Li Jin. You can just call me Mr. Go. Now I'm a head of programs for foundation program in UCSI College. So I'm here today to share with you what kind of program you can join after your SPM level of education, including um, IGCSE, uh, all levels, and so on. All right, now, um, basically, for SPM level students, what is your pathway before you go into the degree levels? So after your SPM, there are actually a few pathway. Uh, depends on your selection and as well as your SPM achievement. Now they are including certificate, diploma, and pre-use before you enter to your degree. So pre-use, there are actually quite a few qualifications. There are quite a few certificates in pre-use that you can choose. Examples, uh, A-levels, SAIS, SACE, uh, Canadian pre-use, uh, International Baccalaureate. There are a lot and including foundations, which I'm going to share with you about foundations today. Now, why foundation programs? Most students who choose foundation programs because it is more affordable and it is actually a fast pathway. It is fast. So, of course, there are pros and cons in every program. So foundation program is one of the very common and popular programs in Malaysia and in around the world. So, to enroll to a foundation program in UCSI, you need to have at least minimum five credits. Now, some a uh, pathway to different degree program may have slightly different requirement on certain subjects. So if you want to know more, you can look for me or our marketing team, Ms. Lillian or Mr. Ken later on. So for our foundation program basically have two pillars, two major pillars, which is foundation in business and foundation in science. So as you can see from the names, you know, we have a business streams and the science streams here. So, um, Business students, or if you are from upstreams, you will have to choose foundation in business because our foundation in science would need to have pure science subjects in your SPM level or your all levels. Okay, so that, that's including a UEC student as well. Now, so what do we have in our foundation business and foundation in science? Now, first, let me introduce to you our foundation in business. Our foundation in business actually very focused on the business pathway. And if you look at our core subject, this is a compulsory subject that we offer to the student. You must take all this and we offer the subjects in a way that you will learn a wide knowledge. Okay, you'll learn, for example, business management, marketing, accounting. So all this you'll be learning. And these are part and uh, parcel of all the business world. Of course, we are not only giving you business subjects, we are also giving a subjects like psychology here. Now, a lot of our students are very interested in our psychology subjects as this is another skills for you to understand the other persons, understand the world better. 
So on top of that, we also have soft skill subjects such as office application and study skills. So having a theory about oh, how to do accounting, how to do mathematics is no longer enough. When you go for the job later or not even to the job, when you go to a degree later, you're going to write thesis, you're going to do a lot of assignment. How well are you with Microsoft Word, Microsoft Excel? So we even give that kind of course to prepare you. This is a soft skill that will be provided to our foundation students to prepare you before you go further. That is, this is a, this is a subjects or the skills that you're going to do, use it when you are further your study or even in your work later. Okay, as well as study skills. Now don't look down on study skills subjects. This is a subject that will help students to manage their time, manage their projects. This is very important. They even learn how to use new skills to take down notes and even some digital note inking as well. So other than these core subjects, some students may be thinking, ah, I may be going to a different pathway uh, for focus on accounting. Maybe I already chosen accounting. Maybe I'm already chosen, like, let's say I want to go to social science. Is that possible? The answer is yes. So we have a pathway like business and social science. That is a, in, that's including the subjects called introductions to mass communications and also essential of IT. You see, we also have another subject called essential of IT. IT is becoming so important in our day, uh, daily life nowadays. Even we're having a chat now using, my, using Zoom. So it, it's a technology world nowadays. So we have incro uh, incorporate all these kind of subjects in. So this is for those who are interested in social science pathway, okay? Now we also have actual science and architecture for those who want to go for actual science later in their degree, then you must take these two mathematics subjects as actual science is about training you to be excel in mathematics. It's all about calculating probability and what's going to happen. So it's a very interesting programs and pathway. Now, other than that, we also have an IT pathway. We call it as an information system pathway. Now, information system also need a little bit more on the mathematics and uh, problem solving skill. So that's why we have one mathematics subjects and also the subjects called essential of IT. Okay, so this is the pathway for foundation in business students. Now, for our students, they can go to almost, almost all art streams degree programs in our UCSI University, okay? For foundation in science program, we also have compulsory subjects. Now, we have designed in such a way that the student must take chemistry one and two as chemistry is the bridge to all the science industry, okay? But uh, some, the students will be maybe going for engineering, maybe they want to go for health science. So that's why we offer both physics one and biology one for you to pick now and for you to choose, are you an engineering person or a health science person? Okay, now some of you may be asking, oh, I never learned physics before, or I never learned biology. I never took biology in my uh, high school. Can I take it now? My answer to you is, Yes, you can take it. This is still fundamental, very basic. We just add a little bit more than what you have learned in a high school so that you can learn a bit more and as well as for you to determine which path is more suitable for you. So foundation also is uh, a place, a program that for you to know which pathway is more suitable to you. Of course, the mathematics subjects uh, and other soft skill subjects is also offered in our foundation in science, okay? So our students learn wide range of knowledge. Now about foundation in science pathway, of course we have health and bioscience. Uh, biology too is for those who want to go for health science. You must take this biology too. And IT is important for all, it doesn't matter you are business or science student, it is important. So we uh, emphasize here and uh, offer the subjects to both business and science students. And that's why you can see in engineering and IT pathway, we have physics too, as well as essential of IT. There are some students that are good and excel in both physics and biology, and they haven't determined yet. They say, I want to study more and to know whether I'm really suitable. 
We give these options, physics two and biology two. You can take these two as your path. And after finishing physics two and biology two, you can choose, it's up to you. You wanna go for health science, you wanna go for uh, engineering. You can choose. Okay, so we give a really wide range of pathway for our students. Now, for your information for science stream students, if you want to study foundation in business, you can. After you found, if after you study foundation in science, you say, ah, can I go for degree in accounting? My answer to you is yes, you can. So foundation in science is giving all our students an even wider pathway in that sense. So this is the subjects and the pathway we have designed for the students so that they can choose a different type of courses in UCSI universities. So how do I decide my course? These are the, this is the questions that all the students ask me before they join their foundation or even after they join their foundations. They come to me, Mr. Go. I don't know what should I study. <laughs> so now that's why I've been thinking, I've been counseling on students and uh, I've come to this conclusion that the students can look at these three factors. One is your results. Another one is your interest. Now, a lot of students don't know what is their interest. That's why they don't know how to decide. Then I would say, why not you also look at your strengths? Your strength is um, your understanding of yourself in your daily life, as well as your subjects. Now you look at the subjects, right? In business and science, we let you study so many subjects so that from these subjects, you will see, oh, this one I score better. I can understand better. Then that means you are more interested and you have better strength in those area. So that gives you some highlight. Let's give you some hint of which area is more suitable to you. Of course, when we, when we talk about workplace later, there'll be even more factors to think about, but let's, let's stick to these three first that is easy for you to decide for the time being. The benefit of studying foundation is that before you finish your foundations, you can still change your mind what you want to study. So that's a benefit. Now, for example, for example, how do I use these three, my results, interest, and strength to decide or to look at whether I'm suitable on certain programs or not? Then I will say, let's say I have a 5B in my uh, foundations and I have determined, I am very determined person and I'm very concerning to others. My strength is chemistry, biology, and I'm also good in communication skill. I, I'm good in talking to any people or even strangers, then I can tell you, you may be suitable to be a medical doctor. You can be, you can be. I'm not saying you are, but I'm saying that you can be. Of course, you need to have that kind of result first and certain of your interests. Now I give you another example. If I have five credits, that's my results. And I'm a, pers I'm a person that can solve problems. I love to solve problems and I like to do hands-on thing. I'm a very practical person. I, I need to do it with my hands. And my strengths would be mathematics, physics, and I can think creatively. I, that, that is who I am. So I would say, you can be an engineer. You can be one. Now, what kind of engineers? Mechanical, uh, chemicals, uh, petroleum, uh, mechatronics. So it will be more details later. But this gives you some hint, some light to know that, oh, Maybe this is my pathway. And also, if I have five credits, I'm good in solving problem again. I love to explore. I love to explore. Then I love to explore new things. I'm good in mathematics and think and able to think creatively. What do you think? Actually, you are suitable to be an IT technologist. Yeah, you are suitable to in this area because IT is a world now, I'm, I'm, I believe that every day you learn something new about IT as well. You learn to use the new apps. You learn how to use Grab to pay to order taxi or whatever. You learn how to order food online, even buy grocery uh, online. Online shopping is no longer a new thing nowadays. So it changed every day. That's why exploring something new is important. If you love that, then you're suitable to this area. IT will change every minute, every second. Now, if you have five credits and you love designing, your patience for space and structures, 
you are good in creative thinking, you are a good presenter, and you have good communication skill. I believe you know what is this. You can be a good architecturer. You can be one. So yes, we have those programs, and our foundation is leading to this kind of program as well. Now, uh, if you have another five, uh, if you have five credits, you are good in solving problems. You are fascinating on human minds. You you are very interested on how human is thinking. Your friends, your families, even yourself. Your strength is research skill. You have good critical thinking, and you like statistics. Statistics, okay. Statistic is a a skill of analyze data. You can be a psychologist. You can be a psychologist. Okay. Well, psychology has their pros and cons. Uh, as you'll be, to be honest, in the real world, you'll be receiving a lot of negative aura because people comes to you, they have problems. That's why your interest in solving problem is in important. But the pros is the good thing about this area is you, if you would like to help people, you like to help others. This is good for you. Now, of course, with five credits. You love being around children. You are patient of teaching. You are very patient, and you can think creatively. You are suitable to be early childhood industry. Or uh, this industry is developing very fast nowadays, and uh, government has restricted uh, we those who want to be in this industry to have certain degree or diploma in early childhood. It's a compulsory. So that, that's why this is uh, developing nowadays. If you have five credits, you are good in language. You are fun and you are fun person, and you have creative cultures. You are good in English and communication skill. You are suitable to be mass communication industry. If you have five credits, you are a person that is attention to the details of whatever it is, and you are good in mathematics. You are accountant. You are very suitable to be accountants. Now, the accountant, uh, if you have someone working as an accountant, well, the pros and cons, I would say that, that there's no work that has only benefit. Okay, even if you be your own uh, boss, okay, you are entrepreneur, you set up your own business. There are pros and cons. So, what about accountant? I can tell you that uh, the accountant that I knew. When it is time to close account in certain big com uh, company like uh, Sam Darby, they close account about three times in a year. Uh, that that week before they close account, they are working like no non sleeping. But before that, they are quite relaxed. Okay, but they they have a lot of works uh, fouling and everything to do. Yes, so it's a very interesting in uh, work as well. If you have five credits. You like to be a boss, and you like to work with others. You are analytical, and you adapt to different environments. Congratulations! You are suitable to be entrepreneur. Set up your own business. Okay, yes, we are actually encouraging students not just to study and in the end come out find a job. No, no. If you have all these skills, all this knowledge, why not set up your own business? But of course, you need some experience. Of course, all right, and some capital. Not to mention that. Okay, now uh, five credits, and you like flexi working hour, and you like to travel around. You are good in communications, and you are independent. Yes, this is also a factors to be or suitable to be an entrepreneur. But other than this, other than this, there's another industry that is suitable for you as well. If you are this kind of person, other than being an entrepreneur, you can be a real estate manager. Yes, we have a course, real estate management course. After taking the course, you can choose to work under a real estate uh, industry company. You can also set up your own company. You have the freedom to choose. And so. We're talking about all these are just about work. After you have chosen, maybe you want to have a look in more details. What is their working environment? Some working environment is uh, working in an office, like me, lecturers. Uh, yes, I'm sitting in an office. I, I teach. 
I use a classrooms or I use online tools, I teach, but in the classroom. Some work like engineers, real estate managers, that you have to go out to meet people. Uh, of course, now we, uh, we, we deal to MCO, we, we have to rely on IT to do more on the communication part, but we still have to meet people. Okay, so you might want to know what kind of working environment that is suit you, but you may not know as you are not exposed to these people. So that's why you can come back and ask us, oh, if I'm working as a mechatronic engineer, so what kind of working environment it is? And once we explain to you, you will figure out, is this suitable to you? So now after all this, there's still a lot of students telling me, Yes, uh, thanks for your talks, but I still don't know. I, I still don't know how to choose. My result is okay, it's good. I can choose any programs I want or certain level of programs, but I still don't know how to choose. I, I'm, okay, I'm scared I choose the wrong program, okay? So if the students, you, you as a student, you, you're scared that you choose the wrong program and you want to ask me, what can I choose? I, I, can, I can choose any programs, but I just don't know how should I choose. I can tell you that I can give you a start. I can give you a start. The start is you look for the programs that is recognized by the professional bodies in Malaysia. Recognized, which means these professional bodies is governed by our Malaysian government and they're giving out license only those with the license provided by professional bodies can be as a profession in that industry. Example, what kind of professional bodies manage uh, medicine? To be a doctor, you know you can't simply study and then become a medical doctor. No, you must be recognized by our uh, Malaysian professional bodies, Malaysian Medical Councils, MMC. They are the one that giving license for the doctors to be able to be a professional doctors. Real estate manager, you want to set up your own real estate management company, you need to have a license from both via, you know, it's called board of valuers, appraisers, estate agents and property managers. Yes, there are a lot of professional bodies that you don't even know about. There's the new professional bodies called MBOTs, the one that is uh, about IT, they control IT. And the one at the top, uh, bottom left there, you'll see Engineering Accreditation Council. These are the professional bodies in Malaysia. And this is their logo, this is their logo. So if you don't know what to choose, maybe you can look into this. If you study these kind of programs, you'll be recognized by professional bodies in Malaysia. This is, for me, is a value added program for me. If you have other interests, go ahead, go for that. You won't go wrong. But if you don't know, let's say you really don't know, you can have a look at it. Now, can I progress my studies in other country after UCSI college? There are some students ask me, I have studied and completed my foundation programs. And now I'm thinking about going overseas. Is it possible? Answer to you is yes, it is possible as we have signed up a partnership with some of our partners' universities, uh, not to mention our UCSI university, which is locally, but you can go overseas. Like for example, Oxford Brookes University, uh, University of Central Oklahoma. We have partners with them, which is from UK and US uh, universities. You can choose which university. Of course, it depends on certain programs. All right, so uh, we are getting more and more partners to join us so that our foundation student can go overseas. But some students are asking, I don't want to go overseas for any reasons, maybe my family uh, factors, maybe financial or any other reasons. Maybe of your girlfriend or boyfriend around here. I don't know. Okay, now anyway, we have as well, for example, Oxford Brooks University has partnered with us not only to recognize our foundation, but also we are offering three plus zero, which means you can study three years accounting and finance program or business and management programs that once you finish this program, your certificate is provided by Oxford Brooks University. They are among the top in the world in their accounting programs. They are good. So we have different, different,
different pathway for students. There's so much of possibility. Now, maybe after listening to my talk, you'll be like, oh, actually I have even more to choose and if it makes me more confused. No, it doesn't. You just need to see what kind of industry suitable to you first. Once you know, okay, I'm, I like accounting, example, I like accounting, then you come to us, you ask us, actually, I like accounting, but what next? Then we will be able to give you more information to do counseling, give you better ideas, what you should choose, where to study, and so on. So this is what we can offer as UCSI College, and we always tell our students, aim high. Of course, at the same time, you work hard, okay? By the way, huh? you cannot just aim high, dreams, and then sit there for nothing. Work hard. Once you come in, we will work hard together with you. But you have to aim high. I'm telling you now, a lot of things are possible. Possible, okay? If you look at MCO now, a lot of people say business not good, lah, this, that. Lah. Do you know that there are certain businesses rising seriously, like the grab food and all, all that? They're, they're getting more and more income. Online business are getting better. So there are pros and cons in everything. Don't look at one side. Every, everything's are possible. There are people still earning a lot of money nowadays. So yes, aim high. But first, choose your programs. If you don't know, look for us. Do not be afraid. You have to trust in yourself. Okay? Believe that you can success in the future. That's the first thing. Then you make a decision. Aim high. Okay, of course, if you have any other questions, you can always ask me, Ms. Lillian, or Mr. Ken. All right, so that's it for my sharing. So Lillian, I'll pass it back to you and I'll stop sharing here. Okay, thank you, Mr. Do. So students, these are foundations. Because after SPM, you all cannot go to degree that, right? You have to do pre-U first. So foundations is one of the pre-U that you can achieve and join. Uh, Pursue, and then we have foundation in business and foundation in science. Okay, any question that you would like to ask now? Or maybe I'll give you some time to think about the questions. All right, we will pass the floor to Dr. Marina. All right, student, if you have any question, you can actually, there's a chat room there, you can just type the questions there, or you can actually ask later after Dr. Marina's slide. Uh, we'll have a uh, FAQ uh, session, all right, you can ask questions later or you can just type it there, then I'll help you to ask the questions, all right? So we'll pass it to Dr. Marina. Dr. Marina. Okay, uh, very good afternoon, everybody. Okay, I'm Dr. Marina. I've been teaching A-levels for 20 years and recently we have phase. Okay, so let me introduce phase first, then I will introduce to you A-levels. Okay, both are very popular pre-U programs. Okay, and in Malaysia, I think A-levels is more popular because it has more than 50 years history in Malaysia. Whereas uh, Australian matriculation says, and uh, there's also another one they call WASE, which actually some uh, colleges call it Australian matriculation, okay, which is uh, about 30 years in Malaysia. Okay, so phase. Okay, SAIS stands for South Australian Certificate of Education. Okay, it's a, a pre u course from Australia. Okay, governed by the South Australian Board. Okay, SAIS International was formerly known as South Australian Matriculation. Okay, it is called, uh, equivalent to Year 12 Education in Australia and is regulated and implemented by South Australian Government via the SAIS Board. Yeah? So it is a very regulated uh, pre u program. Yeah? Okay, and it's a bit different from A levels because the examination is much uh, component is less compared to hundred percent examination to A levels. Okay, so you see in Australia, the so there are many states. Every state has their own pre U program. So how to how to make them more uniform? So they have their ATA score. 
So eta means that, um, so eta is Australian tertiary em em emission rank. What is exactly your eta? It is indicated to compare all the Australian matriculation courses in Australia. So if you have SAFE, you have OSMAT, yes, UNSW, uh, high school certificate. So we can, what you can do is, they can compare the score, okay, using the ETA. So you got ETA 80 for SAFE, which is equivalent to ETA 80 for OSMAT, and also the uh, UNSW high school certificate, okay? So the ETA score is used as a benchmark indicator to enter university. Okay, so whether you do SAFE, whether you do uh, OSMAT, in the end, the ETA score matters. Okay, so university will look at the ETA score. Okay, so if you want to do medicine, you need to have ETA score 80 and above. Okay, in Malaysia. Okay, Australia may be a bit more higher because it's very competitive there and so on. Okay, I think minimum requirement to do a degree, okay, for most uh, universities is ETA 60 and above. Okay, SAFE is well recognized, okay, even uh, top universities like Cambridge and Oxford also accept SAFE, okay, Australia, Singapore, Okay, and US also some students that gain admission to Australia also using the SAIS uh, qualification. Huh? Okay, UK and the US. In Malaysia, all private universities accept uh, SAIS. Okay, and it is a fast track external uh, preview program. It takes 11 months, it's shorter compared to A levels. Okay, and most cost effective because it is shorter, it is more cost effective external preview program. So why SAFE International it is a well-paced, flexible curriculum. You can choose subjects from both arts and humanities. Okay, you have to choose five uh, subjects. Okay, you have a combination of both continuous assessment and final exam. You have assignments and so on. Okay, so 70% is assignment and college-based assessment, like your quiz, okay, tests and so on. Okay, and 30% is final exam. Huh? which is marked in Australia, okay? So your internal assessment is not like your lecturer ha uh, give, has to say, all internal assessment is moderated by the safe board. So when you have finished your 70% internal assessment, what we do is we will send the internal assessment to SAFE to do the moderation. So everything is moderated and marked by, uh, by the safe board, okay? So, it is not 100% controlled by the school, but uh, it's also monitored strictly by the board. Okay? So, for, at UCSF College, okay, we have the safe intake in January, May, and August. Okay? And the entry requirement is five credits, uh, sorry, five credits, inclusive of English and mathematics in SPM or IGCSE or equivalent, okay? And the subject we have offer here is, okay, English is compulsory. Then you have, can choose from five biology, chemistry, physics, accounting, economics, psychology, mathematical methods, and specialist mathematics, and research project B. Okay, research project B is very unique in uh, for SAFE or any of the preview program because you have to do a research project, project as part of one of a subject. Okay, so it's up to you if, or it can be, sorry, can be an additional subject, okay, also. It's up to you whether you want to do research project or you want to do a, a full subject, no? So, most common students uh, will take, okay, we have the health sciences, okay, your chemistry, bio, physics or psychology pathway, okay, that's your health sciences pathway. Okay, we have the engineering pathway where mathematics and physics is compulsory. Then you can choose between chemistry and specialist maths or economics. And we have also the business and social science pathway where you have English, maths, economics uh, is a uh, main subject 
and you can choose two subjects psychology accounting or specialist math okay as your other two subjects okay so we have these three pathways at UCSI college actually says got many other so many uh, so many subjects but we choose subjects that are popular in Malaysia okay we choose subjects that are popular in Malaysia okay uh, so most of the students want to go and do engineering, want to go and do pharmacy, want to do medicine and so on. Okay, so you can do the, okay, according to the pathway given here. And because in Malaysia, like me, uh, medicine, you, uh, the medical board is very important, uh, very fussy, uh, the medical counsellor. So you need to have chemistry and biology. Okay, and for engineering, Physics and maths is important. Okay, and if you want to do chemical engineering, chemistry and maths is important. Okay, so um, and for humanities and social science, okay, because some students they do full science subject and later they want to do accounting, finance, they still can do the subjects even do, do, uh, doing science only. Yeah? Okay, but if you are from an arts background, so you have to choose or uh, choose your English, Maths, Economics, Psychology, or Accounting as your subject. Specialist Maths is usually those who students want to do actual science. Okay, those who want to do actual science, you take the Specialist Maths. Okay. Okay, our intake generally is uh, the first exam. Means we have only one exam series, that is the November 2021 exam. Okay, so the January intake will finish in November 2021, which is 11 months. The May intake, uh, because of SPM, we had to have the May and the XPM, sorry, because SPM had postponed, okay, we had to have the May and August intake, which is an 18 months and 15 months program. Okay, so the assessments for say 70% is college based assessment, that means your assignment, your test, and so on, and your 30% final examination. And always remember the 70% school assessment uh, or college assessment okay, is actually uh, moderated by space. Okay, they will moderate the all the assessment we, uh, we give to the students. Okay, so everything is uh, carefully moderated. So it's 100% uh, controlled and governed by the board. Okay. So our recent cohort, they got the uh, they got recognition of excellence, okay, by the Ministry of Education in Australia, south of uh, of the South Australia, okay, and also the Space Board Chief Exec uh, Executive, uh, okay, and we also like to congratulate our latest cohort, okay, for their score, okay, ninety three point four percent is the highest data. Okay, for the November 2020 exam series and 44% okay, ATA 80 and above. Okay, 90% passed away. Okay. So that is safe. Okay, so if you want a uh, you want a well recognized free program and you want a shorter uh, pathway, you can do safe as your as your pre program. Okay. Okay, next, okay, we come to Cambridge A level. Okay, why I'm very passionate about Cambridge A level because I've been teaching Cambridge uh, uh, A levels chemistry for the past almost twenty years. Okay, I'm still teaching. I cannot let go of the teaching. Uh. For so many years, I still like to teach. Okay. Okay, so Cambridge A level is the gold standard uh, PU programmer. Uh. Okay, it is very rigorous, very academic. Okay, and it really uh, test the talent of the student uh, and see the full potential. And we can see from the results, we know the full potential of the student. Okay, and it is the most recognized uh, for you program in the world. Uh, that's why they call it gold standard qualification. Okay, 
recognized by UNICE all around the world and over 450 US universities. Actually, it's not actually more than that already by now. Okay. Uh, regarded as a passport to success in education and university employment. Okay, students develop a deep understanding of subjects, independent learning and constructive thinking skills. Okay, and this is what is very important in university. Okay, uh, because students understand the subject very well. When they understand the subject very well, they do very well. And, uh, and uh, when they get A in A levels, they become A students throughout the university course. And then they will come up as graduate with second class upper to first class honors. Okay, so um, so this your your deep understanding of the of the subject. Your they teach you to uh, study independently, and you have thinking skill because the question is not whatever you memorize, you warm it out. Huh? Okay, it's where you need to think. Okay, you use your. Uh, uh, your, your your brain uh, so much uh, to think how to come up with a solution okay so Cambridge International AS and AS curriculum are we have so many types of co uh, subject combination but UNICE only required minimum three subjects okay minimum three subjects okay our intakes January May July and September okay January will start on the 20th of January this uh, this month okay uh, and the May will get uh, just after the because of the SPM we've been pushed back, so we have the May, July, and then also the September intake for the IGCSC uh, students. Huh? Okay, so minimum entry requirement five credits inclusive English. Okay, we have subject okay, like uh, mathematics, psychology, chemistry, biology. Uh, physics, economics, and accounting. Okay, when you put stroke means that means you have to choose biology or economics, physics, accounting. Okay, but sometimes if you really need to take bioeconomics, you have to check with us first because the reason why you put the either or is because of time tabling, time tabling issue. But if you let us know early, early we can do some adjustment. Okay, so usually, okay, we offer all the sciences and maths. Uh, in the January, May, July, September uh, intake. Okay, the humanities is only in January and July. The economics, accounting, and psychology is uh, during the January and July intakes. Okay. So, your subject combinations. Huh? Okay, now, if you want to do medicine, you need to have biology and chemistry, which is compulsory, and maths. Uh, most common to take students take biochem maths combination three subjects if you want to do in Malaysia. Lah. Okay, if you want to do overseas, okay, you need to take a fourth subject. Some students will take physics, some students will take psychology as their fourth subject. Okay, or sometimes some students don't know whether they want to do medicine or actual science, they will take biochem maths and further maths. Uh, I have a few cases because they cannot decide between actual science and medicine. So actually the subject combination is a bit more flexible. Okay. Okay. Up to your interest. Okay. And then, but you have to know the board, like engineering and medicine, the board is very fussy. So you need to have bio and chem for the medicine. Pharmacy also bio and chem must be there. Okay. And for engineering, physics, maths. Okay. Or chemical engineering, chemistry, maths. But I suggest physics also, because the, if you don't have physics, some of the chem, uh, the engineering subject in chemical engineering you cannot do. Okay, so physics, chem, and maths. So if they are the students wants to go to Singapore or wants to go to top universities in UK and US, they will take further maths as their fourth subject for engineering. Okay, and sometimes they will also take actual science. They take further maths as their fourth subject if they want to go overseas. Okay, so for humanities, actually humanities subjects, you can take accounting, economics, okay, and maths, okay, if you want to do accounting or business course, okay, and psychology, if you want to do like social science courses, okay, and, um, but if you do pure science also, I have some students who did biochem maths and still do psychology, okay, so 
actually if you do if you are still want to stick to the sciences you can still stick for the sciences at a levels and then later in your degree you decide whether you do science or arts or human or business okay okay so it's still up to you that's why i didn't put the pathway here for 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 uh, a levels because i have some students who do biochem maths, I teach them so hard, they got A star for chemistry and then they do psychology. How the guy will do. Okay. And then some of them when they do business, I got one boy, he first want to do pharmacy, he died, died, he got 95% for chemistry in A levels. Okay, he my stalker, my WhatsApp stalker, because every almost every day he will send me questions how to solve. And he got 95% uh, for for his chemistry. And then in the end, he went and do Monash business. So sad. Okay. So actually you can do anything with A levels. Okay, it's the gold standard to you. Okay. And most students if they do if they, they they do successfully in A levels, okay, they also do successfully in degree. Okay, most of my students come and tell me, teacher, I got first class. I'm so happy. I teach I got gold medal in my university for medicine. Okay, a top student in IMU for medicine. So sometimes we get very happy to hear all this news lah. okay uh, they do very well and come back and tell you okay because i do very well a levels i still do very well in my degree okay, even average student also i got one uh, uh, doing biotech he's actually quite he didn't get all a's he just got b's okay c's and d's actually you know okay but because he 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 learned the study skills during a levels and he applied that in degree. Okay, now he's standing as first class. Okay, first class in his degree. Uh, CGPA 3.7 and above. Okay, so sometimes the, the even though the course is difficult, it gives you the, the groundwork for you to do even well in your degree. Okay, so this is our top student. Okay. Uh, some of them got top in the world for math, okay, and then one boy, uh, Marcus, or the Chinese Seifu Ziwei, he got best across four subjects for AS level, okay, uh, first place. Okay, Marcus actually got a place in NUS, but because of financial problem, he couldn't uh, go to NUS, so it's another, it's an, he's in a, another private institution doing engineering. And he got chemical engineering in NUS, which is very difficult to get. Okay, which is very sad. He didn't tell me earlier. We have to find him some alternatives to get money. Okay, because the mother told him he only can spend 150k only. To, uh, so he need around around 400k. The time and US so was not very uh, because COVID time. So the scholarship also very scarce. Okay. Okay. So this is our uh, student. From our this uh, uh, 2019 awards day, sorry, 2020 awards day, okay, okay, and their result 50% 3A, 54% 3 A's and above, and 100% pass rate. Actually, the, the other exam, the uh, June 20, the results even better, okay, 59% straight A's, 59% 3 A's and above, and 100% pass rate. But I show this because I got photos of the student, but because of COVID, I don't know whether I will have awards day this year or not. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you for coming and listening to us. Okay, so do you have any questions for me? So students, uh, thank you Dr. Nalina. Uh, students, any questions? Yes, no? Okay, maybe I'll ask some questions, all right? Uh, Mr. Go, can uh, students who did not, not from science stream, maybe they are from art stream, uh, during SPM or IGCSE, can they actually do foundation in science? Well, uh, as mentioned in my uh, sharing session just now, those who want to join foundation in science programs will need to have pure science subjects in your high school level, which mean you need to have, for example, your subjects like physics, chemistry, or biology. 
That means for upstream students, most likely you do not have those subjects and unfortunately you can't join the foundation in science program. But if I don't have three, the physics, biochemistry, can I still, I only have biology maybe, or maybe biology and chemistry. I don't have... If you don't have three, but you have two of it, that is enough. Okay. As long as you have the pure science subjects, you are required to have pure science. You don't have, need to have all three of them, but as long as you have two, that allow us to mold you into a better uh, or more professionals in those subjects before going to the degree. Because in their degree programs, if you are talking about a science, sub, uh, science program such as engineering, they are definitely required, for example, uh, physics and chemistry or physics with mathematics uh, in their degree programs, they also look back on your SPM. You are required to have those. Okay. Not all three, but at least two. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, so, Dr. Namina, let's say if I'm not sure where I want to go yet, uh, because A level and C is mostly going overseas. A lot of people thinking that it's definitely going overseas. But if I'm not sure whether I want to go overseas or look, locally do it locally can i still do sales or a level it's local uh institution whether you want to you got your budget okay, and also how long you want to uh, study if you want a shorter pathway you take safe and uh, under the budget if you want a more good quality uh more uh, because uh, a levels you study more because it's an 18 months program the content the the, the the content of the subject is very really more in depth. Okay, so it really prepares you very well for ch uh, to, to challenging universities like Singapore and UK and US, the top universities. Well, yeah. even though it says you can go into top universities, but uh, you still need to catch up with the students who went there with A levels. Okay, because they learn six months more of work than or one year. Because in Malaysia we catch up lah. Okay, in UK uh, A levels is a two years program, two years program. So they learn one year uh, more content than than the SAIS and the foundation student. So that's why they are quite uh, knowledgeable and quite st uh, steady in their studies. So local institutions do recognize SAIS and A level, right? Both, both also automatically they will recognize. Because they're external because they because they are externally regulated so they got quality one so that's why they you they they do they they automatically will recognize the program mm -hmm. okay and uh, mr Goh just now mentioned about oh uh oxford road university three plus zero saying that uh you have to do it locally i mean you do it here you don't really need to go overseas but you will get oxford road university certificate right but what if what if um, after two years I I decide to go overseas? Is it possible? Because it's three plus zero program. So if I want to do it like two plus one, is, can I still decide on that later on? Well, the answer for that question is yes, possible. We have discussed with our partner universities, uh, of course, Brooks universities, to allow our students to experience the life in England as their third year students in Oxford Books Universities in England. You can go there and study as a final year student. So this will not only allow you to save costs to study the first two years, uh, well, whatever you pay will be in Malaysia ringgit, in Malaysia for the first two years, and after that only go to uh, England for the last year. That will save you a lot of cost. At the same time, give you the opportunity to experience the life there in England. Thank you. Thank you. Can I add a lot? Even uh, with uh, A levels and, and space, you can also do the uh, Oxford Books University degree. Okay, either you can go directly to uh, Oxford Books in UK, or you can do it in UCSI College with the three plus zero program. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, students, so anyone have any questions for our lecturers before I wrap up? No, yes. Hi, Lillian. Yeah. So maybe I didn't mention about this uh, and uh, students, maybe they are shy to ask uh, for foundation programs, right? Mm -hmm. 
we are not having 100% final exam, uh, the duration, duration is also shorter. And so the program has been designed in such a way that for all the subjects, for all the subjects in both foundation in business and foundation in science, our final exam is 50% of each subject. Every subject, you have to do a 50% of the final exam. And the other 50% are the uh, contributions from your assignment, maybe your science lab report, your quiz, your test, uh, your presentation, and so on and so forth. So which means the 50% that you have been doing in the class will help you uh, to build up your, uh, to, to improve the score for the subjects before you go for the final exams. So you don't have to be worried that it's 100% on one test. No, it, it is uh, with other home, uh, other assessment, okay? okay? To help you so that uh, you can get a better scores for the subjects. Uh so from here, I will do a summarize for all the students. Okay. Can you see my slides? All right. Yes. Okay. Yes. So from here, you can see A level, the awarding body for A level will be from Cambridge. All right. So for foundations, it will be from uh, UCSI College. SAIS is from Australia. SAIS. Board of South Australia, okay? So for the intakes as well, you can see very clearly here. For uh, Cambridge, we have January, May, July, and September. For foundations, we have January, March, May, July, September, because we know that SP, uh, SBM is going to do in February, right? So we have March intake as well, all right? And then for Cambridge and SAIS, we have May intake for the uh, SPM students. SAIS, we have January, May and August. So you can see the duration will be different for all the three pre-U programs. Awarding body will be different as well. And then there will be subjects that you need to take. In A-level, you only need to concentrate three or four subjects. All right? And then you can actually get your A-level ready. For foundation, it will be roughly 14 to, 14 to 15 subjects. And for six, you also need to concentrate on five to six subjects only. For assessment-wise, A-level is a 100% exam, okay? Foundations, as mentioned just now, is 50-50. And uh, Dr. Navina also mentioned that SAIS is 70-30. So 70% school assessment and 30% is final exam. So you can see all these three pre is uh, there's pro and cons, there's, there are difference, all right? It depends on your, how you want to choose this program, okay? And of course, the fees will be different as well, okay? For Cambridge A-level, okay, it's a, a UK awarding body, so the fees will be roughly 30 to 40k, okay? Our foundations, it's only like 15 to 17k, okay? 15,000 or 16,000, roughly that, okay? Fees will be around 23 to 30k, it depends on the subjects and everything, okay? All right? So, other than that, any questions now? Students? Okay, if there's no questions, all right, so, uh, if there's no question, maybe we'll just, that's all for today. Right. There's one question, question from Leanne. Uh. Okay. Leanne, uh, it's not necessarily you need to take science subjects. Some students uh, may have uh, not sure whether they want to do science or art, so they take biochem max, so they can still do psychology. You can do psychology max, accounting, or economics as your combination. Up to you. Because psychology, they just need uh, uh, the the uh, so certain uh, three A level subjects only, okay. Uh, for psychology courses, you just need three A level subjects only. You don't have to take science. You can take other subjects. You can take psychology as a subject also, because I'm telling because some of my students they did, uh, for example, at the beginning they want to do medicine, okay, biochem max. Then suddenly they change their mind and they did psychology. Okay, still can do. If you do a science subject, you can always opt to humanities or social, uh, social science or, or 
uh, psychology, business, and so on. Okay, but if you want to do, you are an art student, you still can do accounting, economics, psychology as a subject, and then you can move on to your psychology course. Okay, so it's not a must. Uh, I think you have to score in maths and at least general science or any uh, pure science because when you go to degree, they will look back at your SPM. This is the subjects mathematics. Okay. That's for which psychology course also. If a BSc in psychology, yes, I think the BA in psychology, the entry requirements are a bit different. Mm -hmm. So take note on this, yeah, Nian? Okay. But I suggest if you want to do criminal psychology like my niece, I think you do BSc in psychology better. Okay, okay thank you, Doctor. So, any more questions from students? Yes, no? No, then we will say bye bye. At least say bye to me so that I know that you really have no more questions. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Gold. Bye. Okay, bye bye. Thank you, Lillian. Thank you, Doctor Nalina.